Hi, it's Tuesday Tidbit Time again, and we're actually going to do this in a two-part because I have parts to the quilt that we're going to be, one of the quilts that we're going to be showing you this week, but I just had a little tip that I wanted to show you as we go along. So one of the quilts that I am working on, Terry's working on a different one. Um, I am using my absolute all-time favorite Ultimate Flying Geese um, trim tool for this one. But that's, that's aside, I didn't want to talk about that. It's pressing. Now, Terry and I have talked to you about pressing and the importance Perfect of it. Perfect piecing is a pressing matter. <laughs> I think you said that the last time, Probably. Too. But it is really important, and there's ways to go about it. You don't want to be a, an aggressive presser. You just want to kind of be common sense about it. So if you remember how the whole Creative Grids, you started out with a square, just to kind of recap a little bit. You start out with a square, you're laying two on, sewing quarter of an inch across the diagonal, split them apart, and then we're gonna press these guys out and add another square here. So when you press these guys, now there's two different pressings that I wanted to talk to you about. You can kind of see that they overlap in the middle here. And it would make sense to flip this one back first, then that guy, not trying to do this one because then it would just make a mess. So what I want to do is I'm just going to quick set my seam. And then what I want to do, it's kind of like putting a little hip action into this. Oh, God, I know Marty, you're gross. hipping. You're hipping. <laughs> it was gross. But what I want to do is we always tell you you want to go into it with the side of the iron. But what I'm going to kind of do is go in and then twist it. So because this is biased, if I hit that flat on, it's going to bend it, okay? So you almost wanna go into it and then you just flip your iron up through rather than hitting right into the seam because a lot of times too, it'll hit that seam and it'll bend it up and it's gonna skew your piece, okay? So one more time and then we're gonna move on. This side first, we're gonna go into it and chew it. Okay, so ready for my next piece on that guy. But I've done all of my pieces, so I have all of these guys that I've got to press. So what I want to do is I want to do it in the most efficient way possible. I mean, I can sit here and I'm going to do one piece. <laughs> I'm going to do another piece, and I will be crazy by the time I hit my third piece. <laughs> so what I like to do is I pop my first one down and I give that a press and then I just keep piling on top. Now the key to this is I don't want to pile them so that the seam is right on top of each other. You wanna bypass it just a little bit. You're almost gonna be like accordioning them up. And I think we've talked to you about this before. So as you're pressing this piece, grab the next one. And you're just kinda gonna keep going all the way up through so now I'm, you know, probably up to and 10 keeping, here now. <laughs> keeping in mind, you already set the seam the first time. Right. So you don't right. have to so do that again. I don't need again. to set this seam. And you're going to get to a point where your iron is going to start doing this. So then, then okay, you start fine. a new pile. Then you just start a new pile. Okay. So again, just the little tip of it's going to take you a lot less time to just keep piling these up and pressing. And you notice, I mean, I have two of them. I'm doing all of the ones that are going in the same direction. I'm not gonna take from this pile because then it's a whole different direction. So this is a quick little tip on pressing. Um, we're gonna do some trimming, we're gonna make some quilts, and then we're gonna show you what we did. Okay. All right, so we showed you how the flying geese and we did the pressing with that. So now we get to show you the projects that Terry and I have been working on for the last one week. <laughs> One week, four days, something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like Anyways, this. Anyways, this is a line of fabric from Jean Horton called Traveler. And so this one is called Traveler's Crossroads. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. And you can just see they're just very subtle colors, very soft, very uh, moody, I guess. Those very grays and khakis and a little bit of a green in them. But they all kind of, we really liked this. Well, actually, we can show these here because this is kind of the whole line and then the, kind of the feature fabric that went with it. Although the that's showing very peacocks. gray and it's actually green. Oh, well. But that's okay. Okay. It's actually, the green on the wall is what I just had on the table. Oh, okay. So this, is, so this quilt is 70 by 70 and we are doing kits for that that are $80. Sorry, I need to stop <laughs> and think there for a second. But you can see it's a really basic quilt. You've got a block. That is a four patch, two four patches, and a plain block. This is so good for a beginner quilter. Yeah. It's um, stratas, 
So two strip stone together and then cross cut again. So everything is really coming out nice to size and then just three little borders to finish it off. What a great lap size quilt this is too. And you know, Marty, I have to be, um, sorry, be the peacock here. Can you flip one corner and show the backing, show the back? I'm sorry, it's not quilted, but I did that on purpose. Not really, but if you look at that, there is not one. Uh -oh. oh, I'm not looking at that. one seam going around with Yeah, that. but as far as the piecing, it was so easy to do butted seam or faux butted seams. There's not one flipped seam in that whole thing. Let me tell you, I was careful and I didn't want one. And it really, it went together so easily. So this is one of the projects and then we're going to have to pause one more time because the other one is bigger than we could fit both of them on the wall. Okay, so, so hang tight. All right, then now this quilt comes back to what I was showing you the other day when we were doing the pressing and this one is called Traveling Geese. So it's basically just flying geese units, but there is a rhyme and a reason to how you put the lights and the darks with it. And then we found this really cool homespun border and to me, it's, it was perfect. Marty was a little worried that the inner border was dark, and no, it's just what it needed. It's funny because it looked black on the bolt, but it's not. It's just like a really dark, saturated green. Yeah, and then really we also made the choice too, because you can see on this homespun that it's obviously homespuns are double sided. That one side was definitely bolder than the other. Oh, and you we, can look at it. Go back up. Oh, you got to be able to see both of them. Oh, go like this. Go halfway. Oh, well, I was there you go. Look that way. Yeah, see, that's the difference in the two sides. Yeah. So we decided because we had the very soft colors in the center that we went with the softer, softer, not so bold on the outside. And Marty, I just want to interject here too. Sure. Marty used more of the line than I did. Mine, yeah. on my um, crossroads, it, there was fewer fabrics in there, but Marty was able to yeah, really use. Yeah, there's three different ones in this guy. And I only did 12. Right. 12 different ones. And if I could ones. show you how much waist I had in this quilt, it would fit in the palm of both my hands. <laughs> and that's the beauty of and that, that flying grease, of geese it. ruler. Yes, that flying geese ruler is absolutely wonderful. And Terry and I were just talking about um, when I laid this out, I did not pay attention to where colors landed at all. And you know, you can sometimes see that you're getting groups of the same colors, but it just, as we said, it keeps your eye moving. It really does kind of, you know, Sometimes you see this square together. Sometimes you see the, there was another one where was I looking that it was really. Right by your hand to go straight back. Down, 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 down. See that one shows, they, they show the, um, like a square and a square oh, type of thing. kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and then sometimes you see just this block, which is actually the, the alternate one, but if there is, oh, and then this one I, I was noticing. You see almost like a quarter square block here because of the way that the lights and the darks fall on it. So it's just an interesting quilt, but again, so stinking easy to do. So this one is 87, no, 88. 90, no, 98 by, no, no wait a minute, 88, 88 by 97. 88 by 97. And the kit for this one is $100. It includes everything that you see here. And, the, and, and the, the, binding. the binding. Same thing with the quilt that we showed you with Terry's binding included. So um, we hope you all had a great Easter. And um, we're going to cut this one short today because the sun is shining and we, number one, have to get outside and get some work and number two, we church. A, well, <laughs> it's because we did this before Easter. Yeah. But then the other thing that we did want to tell you is that we're going to carry over the rotary blade sale that we had going last week. We're going to do it for one more week. And um, I mean, these are really kind of low discount or discount. They're low prices for your blades. And trust me, you do need to change them a little bit more often than you probably are. So um, take a look at those and see if one of these kits will see you on the other side next week. Bye. Bye.